Okay, I want to show you guys how I do this uh, ladle pour technique um, on some of my pots. And I first saw this uh, really, really soon after I started making pots. I saw a Warren McKenzie jar that had um, two glazes, sort of contrasting colors. Um, it was a jar and um, it had these sort of wide, it had sort of a greenish oatmeal color glaze and then it had these wide sort of white bands on it that were sort of at an angle. And um, I really couldn't figure out how that was done. I thought it might have been done with a brush, but it didn't really look like a brush stroke. Um, so anyway, I started asking around, and uh, after a little time, I, uh, somebody knew how I did that, and so they uh, showed me. So I'll show you guys on this dinner plate sort of sort of what I do. Um, and I'm just using this uh, sort of a sh little uh, bowl-shaped ladle. You can use a lot of different things. You can use a ladle, you can use a Dixie cup, you can use a tablespoon, you can use a measuring cup. You know, just use what you got and see what happens sort of the the, uh, the way to go. So let me just give you, let me just show you at first what I'm talking about here. So I've just got a little glaze and a ladle there. And uh -oh, I'm going to go ahead and put a mark on here. All right, so this is basically what I'm talking about. So you can get a lot of different kind of marks with this. And sort of the basic technique is that you get a little glaze in your ladle, and then you touch the ladle against the pot, and then you tilt until the glaze touches the pot, and then you pull away. And so the consistency of the glaze or the slip makes a difference. How much you put in the ladle makes a difference. Uh, the angle you hold your pot will make a difference. So all those things sort of factor in. So basically you just kind of have to play around with it and see what happens. So now I'm going to switch to this, to this color. I'm not sure I kind of long. Okay, yep, see that's cool. Sometimes I'll double up and do a little step like that. Alright. And you can you know you can overlap your glazes. So let me show you this little more side view here. So so you got a little glaze in your ladle, touch it against the pot, tilt, and pour. Alright? Cool. Alright, let me wash this out a little bit. And one more color on here. So when this fires, this will, you know, this will all be very, you know, look really nice and distinct colors. All right, so we'll just put a little in here, and I'm just gonna do a little on here. Like that. Okay, so if you have a lot of glaze in there, and you, it'll make a wider mark, smaller amounts, you'll have a, uh, a narrower mark. Okay, see how that kind of split? I wish that would have ran all the way down, then I would have had this split pour, which I really like. But anyway, for some reason that stopped right there, which is, which is, which is good too, right? Just take what you get. Just gonna put a couple more. Sometimes you just have to know when to stop, right? Just a little guy right here. Oh yeah. Alright, so that's basically what we're talking about doing <clears throat> and if you're working on a cup or a, uh, a cylinder then sort of the way you would go about it would be you, like if this was my pot you would hold the pot upside down or, or right side up over the bucket touch the ladle to the pot tilt until the glaze touches the pot and then pour like that this is really slick, you know, so it's, you don't have a lot of resistance, so it just got this really wide mark, and probably, I probably had a lot of glaze in there too, so it really flattened out. But anyway, so it's fun to play around with, and just see what kind of, you get, get these little spiky shapes, all kind of cool stuff, but just, I mean, that's just a tiny, tiny bit of glaze in the ladle right there. Alright, so there you go, have fun with that. See what you can do, and uh, that's it. See ya.